So welcome everybody to the concert this evening that is being hosted by the Jake Bedwards Library, but we're actually in two different areas. Um, our guests this evening are in Western Mass and I'm in Northeast Connecticut, but through the power of Zoom and connect connectivity, we're able to do this uh, virtually, so it's wonderful. And the library does hope to uh, resume uh, having in-person concerts and presentations later probably um, towards the late August. And um, something that uh, people may not know, but we have something lined up in October where we're going to have author Robert Oakes, who will uh, join us again and present his books, his book, excuse me, on the ghosts of uh, Berkshire County. So it'll be very interesting to um, have Robert back and in a different uh, mode. And uh, we're looking forward to that. So that's the end of October, the end of October, and it'll be posted on the library website. So um, we hope that you'll join us again and uh, see our one of our guests this evening in a whole different role as writer and um, so that's great. It's also of the Cultural Council that we have this evening's program and we're very grateful to the funding and ongoing support that we get from the Southbridge Cultural Council. It would be impossible to host these professionally uh, executed programs without um, some generous funding and um, this is a long-term relationship we've had with the Cultural Council and uh, we hope that long it may continue. So um, I've known Robert and Kate uh, for a long time. Kate, I've known her since her early days in school and Robert a little later and um, it's just been wonderful to uh, see the two of you um, develop your skills and your just your consummate interest in life and verve and to see how that uh, spills over to the audience when you present your programming. And uh, Jacob Edwards Library has been very fortunate to have uh, you to present in many different modes. And we look forward to, as I say, the program in October. But I don't want to labor the point because uh, we've got a very exciting program ahead for this evening. And uh, I welcome everybody to the Jacob Edward Library hosted program uh, present Smith uh, in concert this evening. So welcome. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much, Margaret. Program. Well, we wanted to, we're welcoming you not only to where we are in Western Mass, but this is our living room. So we hope that tonight you feel, um, you know, that you can kick back and relax. We can, you know, you, we can just, pretend like we're all sitting in someone's living room and and enjoying um, the intimacy and comfort um, that comes from home. So if there's a little shuffling around, please excuse it. But or dog barking. We do <laughs> yes, have a great do have a big dog got a and, big mouth um, and he's outside. And all of that. But for the most part, I think that our music will carry over the dog. So. Yes. So we're going to be presenting tonight um, um, a variety of songs, some of them which are our own compositions and some of them um, are covers that we really love from artists that we really uh, feel near and dear to. Um, but we're going to start out with um, an Irish tradition traditional um, called She Moves Through the Fair. Mm. My young love said to me, my mother won't mind, and my father won't slight you for your lack of kind. And she went away from me, and this she did say it will not be long love till our wedding day she went away from me and she moved through the fair and fondly I watched her move here and move there. And she made her way homeward with one star awake, like the swan. 
husband and wife duo out of the Cambridge area and they have just a beautiful and gentle um, sound. I encourage you to look them up if you don't know them already. You want to talk about the next tune? 
Sure. So this tune is another one of ours that um, we wrote. Um, I was I was thinking of I was talking to Robert who co-wrote this song, and I was trying to think of something along the sentiment of um, "Lean on Me." You know that old song where. You know, it's basically just a very simple sentiment of being able to show up for each other. Um, but I also really loved um, the idea of it being a song that if we were playing it with a band in a crowded place that people could swing their drink around <laughs> to it um, in sort of this feeling of like friendship and brotherhood kind of feeling. Um, and in the past year, um, like so many things, it's taken on a different meaning still. Um, and has be was really deepened with age because of everything we've all been through. Um, so this song is called Carry the Weight and it's uh, about being there for each other. If you have a drink, swing it. Feel free to swing it or imaginary drinks. Any Tea. kind of drink will do. Water. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> going to tune my guitar here with using my device so I'm not uh, just like randomly texting in the middle of a performance <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually that sort of relates so I grew up in um, in North Jersey in a very busy um, congested area of the state of, a, of what is really a very busy and densely populated state and um, growing up I had this sense that there might be a world somewhere outside of suburbia where things were, where it was possible maybe to find some quiet and some space and some connection with nature. But it took me a little while to get there. Um, when I was a teenager and I was able to drive, I started going out west, western New Jersey, which is actually very, very beautiful and very rural. Many people don't know that about New Jersey, um, that it actually has some really beautiful and uh, natural areas. Um, 
Anyway, I used to love to go to this place called Stoke State Forest and camp there. But the first time I ever went camping, I had to go through a little bit of an ordeal because in the world that I grew up in, like bad things happened in the woods. Like it was a scary place to go, you know? And for me anyway, it took me some time to get used to this idea that I was gonna be like out there in the wild all by myself with only this thin piece of vinyl protecting me from certain death. I mean, who knew how many ways uh, death could be dealt by whatever creatures were lurking out there in the woods, some natural, maybe even some supernatural, <laughs> who knows what's going on out there. So it took me a little while to adjust to this. And actually that first night sleeping out in the woods, I couldn't have sleep. I say sleeping, but I wasn't. I was just up all night, constantly on watch, just on this, keeping this vigil against, you know, dangers that I couldn't see. And every once in a while you'd hear something sh 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 scurry around, some snap, you know, it's like Bigfoot, you know, whatever. Axe murderer? <laughs> What's going on out here? Um, I don't know which is one's worse. <laughs> yeah, I know. And then, but what happened was I actually had really a revelation, an experience I'd never had before. In the world that I was used to, I, I was not, I had never experienced the gradual dawn the way that it happens when you're in nature like that. And it's far away from city lights. I grew up right outside of New York City. So it was always light, even when it was at nighttime. And I realized just how gradually and slowly the world awakens um, from, from nighttime. And that actually that moment when things are most dark is that moment when you start to feel that shift toward dawn and that little bit of light starts to creep in and you start to see definition between the trees and the mist picks up and you start the world just starts to awaken you start to hear those birds and everything and so I felt emboldened by this I felt like okay this is getting safer so I up, pulled myself out of my little <laughs> womb-like tent that I was in and uh, started walking around in this half light and I felt like I was in a dream you know I'd never experienced anything like this before I just stood by this pond watching this like, whatever it was I don't, what kind of creature it would be out? Oh, a beaver, that's what it was. And it was, <laughs> and it was just doing this circle around and around in the pond. And I became mesmerized by this. And this song came about this whole experience that I was having. So this is called Before Dawn.
sun to shine through the trees I feel like I'm the only one awake in this world of gray mist and green leaves and I feel at home feels good to be alone I'm up before dawn waiting for the sun waiting for the sun Oscar decided, our dog Oscar decided to pick the quietest song yet, a song about silence, to make his appearance. You may have heard him in the background. <laughs> uh, all right, he's our backup singer. Yeah. So he's we're gonna, a bit of a diva, though. Yeah, a little bit. He steals the show every time. So we're going to do a song now that was written by the great Leonard Cohen, and uh, one of the greats, great poet, great singer, songwriter, and uh, such an inspiration in so many ways. This is a song of his that we've been singing just again and again and again, and it never seems to be, to sort of dry up for us as a song. It's just constantly providing more inspiration and just something about the tune. It just seems to open windows instead of closed doors. This is um, Suzanne. Ooh. 
kisses and takes your hand and she leads you to the river she is wearing rags and feathers from salvation army counters and the sun pours down like honey on our lady of the harbor and she shows you where to look among the garbage and the flowers There are heroes in the seaweed There are children in the morning They are leaning out for love And they will lean that way forever While Susan holds the mirror to travel with her and you want to travel blind and you know you can trust her for she's touched your perfect body with her mind thanks Thanks. Um, I don't know always where songs come from. You know, they, I don't, a lot of times I don't necessarily sit down to write a song. It's just kind of like one starts to pop into my head and I try to catch it. You know, I try to like, ah, <laughs> before it can get away. Um, and sometimes that it can take years of just like them kind of pieces of them coming back and tweaking it and moving things around, living with it. But this next song actually came to me like almost in a complete download, which is a very rare thing. Um, I woke up middle of the night, it was like four in the morning, Kate was still asleep, the room was dark. And um, there was this song, like it was just like there, it had it seemed to come like sort of out of a dream that I was having. And so I quickly like wrote down the lyrics and it happened pretty quickly. And I actually could hear the melody, but I couldn't sing it because I didn't want to wake Kate up. <laughs> so I had to wait a couple hours before I could like record it. And so I just kept singing it over and over again in my head. Um, anyway, this is the song um, it came from this dream. And it was also inspired a little bit by Yeats because um, I had been just reading his um, uh, song of the wandering Angus and, um, and the, the, the melody or the sort of the rhythm of it um, was kind of also stuck in my head. And so I think that helped to kind of inspire the, um, the sonics of this particular tune. This is, um, to let you go. I wake up in a memory. I cannot put my dream to sleep. I feel you in the room with me. I feel the darkness in the deep. You step so lightly on the sand and thread the liquid undertow. But I can't hold you by the hand. I have to learn to let you go. Again we spin inside a dance upon the edge of our last day. So little light fits in a chance to look for words I cannot say. Move together on the sand and thread the liquid undertow. I couldn't hold you by the hand. I had to learn to let you
admit that I was wrong to keep you in this room with me. sea song or the mountain song? Thank you, Ted. I see the clap. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's up to you. What do you feel like? All right. We're either going to go to the mountains or the sea. Which mm. is it going to be? Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. By a show of chat, mountains or sea? It's a choose your own adventure. <laughs> First one that we see. Sea. All right. See it is. You got it. <laughs> We see the sea. All right, this is another relatively new song of ours. Um, this one, um, uh, you know, the, the, the ocean, the sea. I used to go there all the time as a kid. I used to love to walk on the beach at night, in the middle of the night, when like late at night when no one was there. Because, you know, it's, again, it was hard to find like a quiet time on the beach at the Jersey Shore. So love to go late at night and just be there with the ocean and imagine um, I used to see it as this just wall of, you know, just this infinite wall of water and dark, you know, and it was scary sometimes. Like, it genuinely frightened me to just sit there and stare out at, at it, this, like, what appeared at sometimes to be just like this infinite, endless, uh, you know, emptiness, you know. But nevertheless, like, it drew me in and I would sort of sit with it and, and start to feel like um, some thoughts and feelings kind of bubbling up that would turn into a song eventually and that's what that's what this one is about um, it's about feeling that fear of going to the depths um feeling that it's inevitable that you must feeling that once you let go that actually it washes over you and it lifts you up in a way that um, is actually quite powerful and beautiful uh, this is called the deep Cause 
there's something rising up from the do a song now written by um, uh, Daniel Lanois, who is best known as a, a producer of other artists. He's produced U2 and Bob Dylan and uh, Peter Gabriel and Emmy Lou Harris, and the list goes on and on. And he's a tremendously gifted producer with a very distinct sound. Um, but he's also a wonderful singer songwriter, and he's put out a lot of albums of his own. And um, this is a song of his that we love to sing. This is um, this is called The Maker. By uh, oh, did I say his name? I don't think I did. By Daniel Lanois. Yeah, exactly. Did I? Yeah, okay. I think so. I don't remember. If I did or not. <laughs> oh, 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 dear.
go back for this next song to that same place that we were earlier when I was surviving a camping tr trip in the woods. <laughs> and by surviving, I mean I was just surviving the phantoms of my own imagination, really, um, because there was nothing dangerous, really. I mean, the beaver couldn't do much damage. Um, but as it turns out, a little further up the mountain that I used to love to go to, way at the top, called Sunrise Mountain, is a place that you can go and look out over the vistas and see the sunset, see the sunrise, because you got a view in all directions. And I used to love to go up there and watch the sunset. And I wrote this next song that we're going to play about an experience I had sitting in that very spot. Well, we played this song at Kripalu not so long ago uh, here out in, in, in the Berkshires. And um, I talked a little bit about the song. I said how I used to love to go to this spot and how it's so beautiful and so peaceful and so tranquil. And I used to get inspired by it. Anyway, somebody came up after the show who was a school teacher from New Jersey. And she said, you know, um, that spot you're talking about is actually the highest concentration of poisonous rattlesnakes in the state of New Jersey. And um, we used to love to take our kids there <laughs> to see the snakes, which I'm like, <laughs> Okay, that sounds really dangerous, but all right. It sounds like wise teaching. <laughs> it is New Jersey. We like to, you know, be, <laughs> give them tough love. Um, but anyway, I thought, well, that's actually kind of perfect that this place where I felt and found so much beauty, I didn't realize I was so close to death and danger. <laughs> um, well, as it happens, I went back to that very spot this weekend on a little driving trip I made through northwestern New Jersey. And here I was 20 years later standing in that same location and the time and the path, just the experience of it all was just blowing me away. It's like, wow, here I am again. And so much time has passed and yet it feels like no time at all has passed. And I was just getting overwhelmed by this experience. And I was like, oh, this is so beautiful. When all of a sudden, kung, 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 I hear this like rustling, loud rustling in the trees and like the trees are shaking. And I just, I didn't even think, I just leapt off the rock. I probably screamed and I ran into the car and closed the door. <laughs> and I just assumed that I was, you know, that a bear was about to get me. Now I never actually saw the bear, but I believed that it was there. <laughs> and I was afraid for a moment to go back. But then I thought, well, 
I have to go. I mean, my can't, my last moment at this beautiful spot can't be me running away in fear. And so I went back. <laughs> Besides, I had dropped my sunglasses, so I needed to get them. Anyway, I went back and I stood there feeling both the fear of it all, but the beauty of it all, like simultaneously. And um, I don't know, it was a, like a little bit of a breakthrough moment. It was really kind of special. So this song is inspired by that place. And uh, it has a certain magic to it um, that um, hopefully this song um, helps to convey. This is sitting beside a giant, although I might not rename it sitting beside a black bear. And I, and I didn't know it. <laughs> getting close to the end and uh, we want to thank you so much for being a part of this tonight joining us online in this way and um, we want to thank Margaret Morrissey from 
the library director at Jacob, Jacob Edwards Library, who does so much to create such wonderful programming and cultural experiences out there in Southbridge, and thank her for always uh, including us and inviting us to be a part of that. We also want to thank the uh, Southbridge Cultural Council, um, who helped to sponsor this event, as well as the Massachusetts Cultural Council and the Friends of Jacob Edwards Library um, for all for making this possible. And um, we're going to end here with a <clears throat> song about summertime. Mm -hmm. And you want to say, but well, you know what, I'll talk Can about time. And yeah, we're going to do two songs by Scottish artists and um, back, to back. back to back, a little Scottish uh, farewell. Yeah, very well. Um, the first one being a very old song that, as far as I know, no one knows who wrote. It's been around. It's one of those tunes that seems to have emerged out of the earth, and everyone's been singing it ever since. Um, that's Wild Mountain Time, a song about the coming of summer. Um, if you know it, please sing along with us. Um, we won't be able to hear you, but we'll feel you coming through to us. And the other song is by a more recent Scottish artist named Eddie Redder. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, this is um, a song that she wrote um, probably in the early 2000s, I believe, but it's new to me. And um, Robert uh, brought it to my attention um, a couple of months ago, and it uh, it really just hit me between the eyes. Again, like, you know, talking about how music has taken on, um, and art has taken on such uh, more depth, and so many things have taken on so much more depth um, with everything we've just been through um, uh, collectively. And... Uh, I, I kind of was reflecting on, um, I mean, it made me weep because it made me realize that I really was focusing so much on what I was missing and what I couldn't do and where I couldn't be and who I couldn't see. And that was um, part of my suffering um, in addition to, you know, feeling the suffering of all those who were dying and, and losing loved ones. But um, for myself, I, I, I got kind of caught up in my own missing out on things and this song really brought me right back into you have everything you need you have everything you need and you are safe and protected and loved and um it was very sobering um so it, it came at the right time as a good reminder um and may it be uh something we can all carry forward um the song is simple soul and we're going to sing that right after wild mountain time all right a song for summer Sí. 
so much thank you everybody have a, have great, a great night see you soon hopefully in in person yeah next time bye bye